Um, I work with uh, Daniel Sontag at the IUI department at the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence, DFKI, in uh, Saarbrück in Germany. And today I want to uh, tell you a bit about smartwatches and what mistakes we made and what our findings were and how you can start on that to, if you want to uh, do some research in that direction, so to save you the trouble, basically. Um, so. Currently we are working on the uh, Cognit project. It's a project where we enter the mixed reality realm to help dementia patients. Um, I will just give you a short introduction, so if you want to see some videos or more information, please visit our webpage. Um, according to the Alzheimer's Association, uh, 10 to 20 percent of people above 65 years uh, have problems with uh, my cognitive impairment. So, uh, they have problems with memory loss and, and things like that, and this is what we like to, what we want to address. So in our scenario, we have uh, a patient uh, or an elderly, and he has at home a robot companion, a humanoid uh, robot who is basically uh, sitting with him at the breakfast table or just at his home and gives him uh, assistance during the daily life activities that he maybe couldn't do on his own or would uh, require someone else to help him. So we try to reduce the caregiver burden in this case. Uh, we have also many other devices um, that are connected. So for example, head-mounted displays, eye trackers, digital pens, and uh, yeah, augmented reality, mixed reality devices. Um, so we are our, our main concern is about um, medication management to help uh, patients and elderly people to track uh, their, their medication, to, remember, uh, to remind them about taking them or to drink more water. So, um, the now can ask you, the, the robot is called now, he can ask you if, if you have re taken your medication or reminds you. And then he, he tells you to, to take the pills, right? And you say something like, uh, oh, where, where are they? Or I can't remember where I put them. So the now goes through the memory of the day. So he records everything with sensors and cameras. And he goes through, the, through his memory and he tries to find where was it. So, and then he gives you some advice to where, where to look for your pills, so he tells you then, well, they are on the kitchen table, and please don't forget to drink some water with it, and only take one. Huh? So, um, yeah, and all this is happening in a natural speech dialogue, so he's really this, this small guy, he's sitting there, and, and you can just, the idea is you can talk to him. And um, so, smartwatches nowadays, they are uh, becoming increasingly sophisticated and popular, and uh, I have yesterday talked to Professor Riva. He's also, uh, they have also done some work with smartwatches. And um, he told me that basically they ran into the same problems as we did. So I think it's really important for other people to, to know about what, what are the problems today, but still why, why should we use smartwatches and how can they be of use to us. So um, back in the day, this was actually a few years ago, we started with the uh, iMatch. It was an Italian-made watch, which was started, I think, as a Kickstarter project, and uh, it was already pretty cool. So it was running an Android version, and you had it on your wrist. It was the small touchscreen uh, display, and um, well, you the, the the problem was that uh, they had a closed system. So. It was a customized version, and as a researcher or developer, you weren't really able to access all the uh, hardware pieces. Like, for example, we weren't able to stream data over Bluetooth. So there were all these cool sensors uh, that we could use, but we couldn't access them in the right way because the only thing that we could do is record them, and we couldn't stream them, for example. And um, then later on at the consumer market, there were some other devices, like, for example, the Samsung Gear. And the idea behind these devices is that they are variable, but they are a companion to the smartphone. So wherever you go, you have always to have your smartphone with you, because otherwise you won't have, be able to use all the functionality. So um, we, we tried to deploy some software on it, but uh, actually the architecture is a bit different there, and it's mostly made for displaying stuff or, or 
simple interactions. There's no real computing that you can do on it. So we finally ended up with the uh, Sim Valley smartwatch. And the, the nice thing there is it's a standalone device. It has, uh, it's mostly a small smartphone. So it has all the functionality like Wi-Fi, 3G, co uh, 3G connection, so you can really plug in your SIM card and, and use it to make calls without your smartphone. Yeah, your smartphone can be at home and you still have this watch with you everywhere you go. And this is the main benefit. So you have this device that is always with you. It can record all the data and you can just, wherever you go, it stays with you. And for the patient also, it, it, always with him. It doesn't matter if the robot is in the other room or wherever you go. So, right now we have a prototype application where we have um, two settings, basically. So, the, the one is pretty simple, so you get some message or a reminder or pictures and they get displayed on the smartwatch, yeah, on, on the small display, and you can then use simple touch gestures to interact with it, as you would do on, on a smartphone. And uh, the other one, the, the more important one for today, is uh, we use it as a platform for a speech dialogue system. So uh, you're actually like in, in the Bond movies or in other Asian movies, you're just talking to your watch and uh, it, uh, it tells you something that it talks to you back. So what do we need for that? What, what do we need to be running on the uh, smartwatch? And uh, I can tell you everything, it has really enough processing power, so um, it is really possible to run everything on the device. So uh, I, I assume that future devices will be even more powerful and um, whatever you want to do, like streaming or everything, you can do it right on the device without need of any other things. So uh, for the speech dialogue, we. Uh, need to start with recording the, the voice data, right? And then we need to run it through some speech recognition to actually transcribe the raw data. And after we have these words, we actually need to understand what, uh, what, what do they mean, what, what, what is the meaning of what was just said. And um, so let's, let's take the example, where are my pills? So we need to understand, well, yeah, it's a question, and the question is about the pills. So um, then, then we go to the dialogue manager and we look, uh, so how does the dialogue look so far? And how should we answer to this question? And then we find that, oh, he's looking obviously for his pillbox, so uh, we need to find where is this pillbox, and then we, we, we search in our episodic memory to uh, whether we, we can find it or wherever it is. And uh, then we, we actually need to create some, some answer or um, some response for the user, which is then uh, synthesized through a text-to-speech synthesis and directly output them through the speaker. So um, our architecture right now looks like this. So we have, uh, as I said, all the software running on the uh, smartwatch, uh, the speech recognition, the text-to-speech synthesizer, and the dialogue manager. And it is connected uh, to our overall architecture using the already mentioned uh, network connectivity. And the important thing here to understand is that it was pretty easy to actually connect it because um, the watch is a standard Android 4 operating system. So all the software you may already have, your applications or streaming or whatever, you can just plug it in and you can, you can start right away. So um, there's no need to, to set up some Bluetooth connection or whatever. You can already use uh, HTTP, ICP, you know, everything. So um, we are currently using actually a cloud-based uh, recognizer service, a cloud-based speech API, because we find that uh, the quality of the results is higher. So, um, so for example, for the automatic speech recognition, we uh, tested several different engines that are available today that are, you can just go to the web pages, you can download them, and then you're ready to go. So it's uh, very, very easy to uh, deploy them. And um, there's, there's basically the question if you use, uh, want to use an uh, offline version or a cloud-based uh, system. So um, Google and uh, iSpeech are two services that uh, work uh, from a server side. So you, you send them your data and then you get some response back, the analyzed uh, data. And uh, from the Carnegie Mellon University, we have a very interesting project which works offline. 
And um, when, when we were developing these applications, we ran into two problems. So the first one was um, sometimes we would like to add our own language models or grammars. And it wasn't always possible with all of these solutions. So, for example, Google only offers two modes, one for freeform and one for web search terms which is okay for your standard uh, smartphone application, but if you want to do something very specific to the medical domain, of course, you need some, <laughs> some language models and grammars. So, uh, which is very cool is that the uh, CMU provides a very extensive way to customize everything about the language models. And, uh, yeah. and the other thing is that uh, sometimes as a researcher or developer, you of course need to add some of your custom code into, into the uh, uh, engines and um, also for this in this case the only the CMU Sphinx project is very is accessible as uh, open source so um, for the uh, output of speech it is very important to us that it sounds as natural as, pos as possible because we don't really like this robotic sounding uh, voices uh, we want something that um, sounds as human as possible and um, there is also the, the question if you want to go um, cloud-based or offline. And um, well, the, the hugest differences are really in, in the quality of voices. So for all these um, for all these engines, you can get various languages and uh, female and male voices, but uh, the difference is in. Uh, sound quality. So um, we found that iSpeech and Ivona they have very nice sounding voices. So there's a lot. Um, the punctuation is very good, and the, uh, the, the stressing of the language and everything. So if you want to go for one of them, I, I would highly recommend it. So to summarize, we believe that uh, smartwatches are very, very good devices, uh, smart objects that can be used in uh, many, many different situations and are especially. Um, promising if you want to develop a speech dialogue system. Thank you very much.